morning. So today I thought I would get some of my lettuces in, plus some of my cabbages and a few other things into the beds. Now this bed has been weeded, as you've seen, lots and lots of bindweed. Now this is the one reason I do love doing no dig, is because when you do get weeds, they're very, very easy to pull up. And in fact, these are quite small compared to what I do get. And always remember, just because you do no dig, doesn't mean you do no weeding. So I thought I'll get these in. Now these are my romaine balloon lettuces that I sowed a few weeks ago now, and they're looking healthy. And yes, I've got an awful lot of them, simply because the snail damage at this time of year could be quite bad. And in fact, I actually can see some snail trails on here. And yeah, there we go. There is a snail underneath. So let's get these in. Now we start most of our vegetables in modules because it just allows me to have that little bit more control over when I'm planting which means I can get more crops into the ground successionally. But this pea bed, which is doing very well, the peas have really started to come along. But this has still got fleece on, so I'm going to have this bare patch here just for my lettuces. It's more so I can protect them from any pest damage, mainly birds. Obviously fleece will not protect them from slugs. Now lettuce is a great filler crop because it really will fill up gaps all over the place. And last year my lettuces here did very, very well indeed. Now my soil is wet, but it's not sodden. So I am lucky to be able to get out these lettuces at the moment. Now, I'm expecting to lose quite a lot of these lettuces, mainly due to slugs. And we had so many slugs last year because of the conditions that I'm expecting it to be the same this year. So I am over planting certain vegetables. And it's really nice because this compost is so light. I'm actually able to just use my hands. And also, don't forget your label. Now that is planted up, all I'm going to do, again, is cover it with this little bit of fleece. So this isn't to protect it so much from frost, but from a little bit of wind damage. This time of year at the moment, if you're here in the UK, you're more than aware, we've had nothing but stormy, windy, wet, awful weather for, for months at a time. In fact, apparently it's the wettest 18 months that we've had here in the UK. Now I, I have a variety of different lettuces to go on. All of them can withstand the weather that we've got at the moment. And again, they'll even withstand a little bit of frost damage. It's more the slugs and the rains, especially with early transplants. You can sow a lot more on your allotments than what you realise. But sometimes you will need a little bit of fleece to try and help the plants transplant and grow well at this time of year. Now we have an awful lot of lettuces. We have about six or seven different varieties that are all pretty much ready to go into beds. So that is what I'm going to get on with, is planting all these particular lettuces. Now it's not just lettuces that I need to get into the ground at the moment because I have been rapidly running out of space in this quite small greenhouse. I have cabbages too. Now these were sown 
a little while ago and if I remember when I did I'll pop the date there <clears throat> now these ones are these are greyhounds and I've also got some earliest of all cabbages and some spring greens all sowed about the same time and these are all going out too now brassicas at this time of year it's not so much the butterflies that are going to be the issue but the pigeons the pigeons are going to have a field day and in fact today I am absolutely surrounded by pigeons so these will be going into our makeshift brassica cage now this year we've made it much taller so we can get in much much easier to actually weed because the biggest issue if you have low covers for a larger area a lot of the times you do kind of forget to go in or you just can't be bothered to maneuver everything off to be able to get in so I've built it much higher and access from the front and we just need to finish doing the brassica cage so it's prepped against butterflies which will be flying about ready to lay quite soon in fact probably within the next month or so but for now it's just the pigeons and that's ready to go in now welcome to my brassica cage this is where we're going to be growing all our brassicas now we grew them here last year as well but I don't move them every year. They're absolutely fine here for this year. There was no diseases present. There was a little bit of an issue with nutrients at the top where our cabbages really did fail to thrive at the top half. But we've amended it a little bit, added on a little bit of soil. Well, a bit of old rotted compost here in this space. Now this isn't a no dig, but we try not to dig it very often. Next year, we're hopefully going to be able to create enough compost to make this into a no-dig bed because we do have an awful lot of weeds growing here in this bed. Now, you probably will be able to see little bits of comfrey. We're going to leave that for now because if you've ever tried to dig out comfrey, it's next to near impossible to get it all out. But we'll be harvesting those leaves to make fertilizer for the rest of the year. But at the moment, I've just got a couple of rows of cabbages I need left to do. And then that's my early cabbages here for hopefully harvesting by the end of summer. Now the rest of this row is going to be the earliest of all cabbages. Now I have got more weeds in here and it's driving me nuts this year with the amount of weeds that are in this bed. But we can now at least get in here and actually weed now these cabbages are going to be spaced 45 centimeters give or take this is very very hard compact clay soil and i really can't wait to get these sorted this bed sorted at the beginning or the end of the year now you want to give your cabbages some space between each other at least a foot to 45 centimeters for longer growing varieties now I don't know whether you can notice a big difference in this patch here there is absolutely no covering of the extra compost that we put on a few months ago. So I am actually going to cover this area with a bit of compost, just so I can get better, deeper plantings of these cabbages, and then I can foot them in. When you're footing them in or healing them in, you're just making sure that there's not gonna be any rocking from those plants, because the last thing they want to do is to get pushed around in any wind that may happen here on the allotment now I'm just going to tread very carefully just to make sure that those plants are firmly in the ground now one thing that you are going to have to be careful with is if you're netting your brassicas against those pesky butterflies that you don't plant too close to your net what will happen is if you do the leaf will lean up against the net, can actually lay their eggs 
on that leaf through the netting. So we've got ours a good foot away from those nets. Might not still be enough, but I also don't want to lose too much of my spacings here. Now the eagle-eyed among you will see my beer traps for slugs. Now I'll see if I can get a better picture, but there is an awful lot of slugs here in this pot. Now this was only put out yesterday and I'm trying my hardest to reduce slugs as naturally as possible. Now it's not the most ideal way to be doing slugs, but it does work. And I'd rather give them some beer so they die kind of happy than to poison them with anything like the old fashioned slug pellets or anything like that, where they'll get into the food chain and probably poison other animals. Now I have placed these slug traps from the top all the way down in certain areas and I have definitely got an awful lot of slugs. In fact, this pot is absolutely full of slugs. Now this compost that we've got on here, we actually took it off an old work heap that the gardeners used to just dump on. So it's not the best and it is probably absolutely teeming with slugs. I know it's still teeming with worms. That's why we've left it on the top surface. But the boulder patches, as we get further down where we didn't have enough of this stuff, that will be getting a good dusting of compost, probably about a centimeter in depth just spread around. The rest of the half in here is going to be purple sprouting broccoli and sprouts here this year. And our broccoli and other things will go into other areas where we can net those two. But I am trying really hard this year to limit my amount of nets. Whitefly is a massive issue at the moment because our, we our winters have just not been that cold. And every time we've netted anything, the white fly has decimated an awful lot of our crops. Because it's netted, the natural predators of that white fly can't get at it. So they multiply, causing a massive white plume every time you try and enter a brassica cage. Now the other brassicas I could do with getting out are my mammoth red rocks. These are a lovely form of Wow, it's got a, it's a red cabbage, but it's tinged with green. It's just a really nice, dense cabbage. Now I have no room up in that brassica cage for these particular crop. So I've built a temporary makeshift brassica cage in an area that I hopeful that these will grow really well. So this is the area that it will eventually go into. And I'm just trying to find netting that will actually fit this. These are the old hoops that I had on this when I had a, different type of crop growing in here and we just wanted to protect it but what I will do is take off a little bit of the height of this brassica cage because we actually don't need it this high and then the net will fit absolutely fine now if you remember I planted my Jerusalem artichokes in the other half up to this piece of metal here so I have this space here to grow some more brassicas now they will be cabbages the sprouts and the broccoli were going into other places. So this is where some of my mammoth red rocks are going. Now I have got some red calibos as well, I do believe. And when they're big enough, they'll be coming into here as well. So I don't want to take up all the room with these mammoth red rocks. But that's something else I'll be planting today. Now I have weeded in here, but it's not the greatest of beds. This is where I had the raspberry canes. And it's also the area that we had the massive mound of bindweed, bramble, all sorts of here over the years. Now, we've normally only grown things in here that can cope with that kind of struggle of that kind of infestation. Now, we have been working it over the year and it has got a lot better. But really, last year we grew Jerusalem artichokes in that side, which we've done this year. 
and this side was our corn. Now it is slightly shaded here through a good part of the morning because of the great big tree that's right there. So I'm hoping in this area that the cabbages do okay. But I want to be able to grow cabbages here because it's one of the beds that's out of the way and I won't mind seeing the netting so much. I really am getting fussy with my nettings over the years and I want to see them less and less. Now this was all the spent compost that we had from pots and things like that and old beds and with all the wind of late we have had nothing but rubbish flying all over the allotment it really is annoying now i've got to put some now these are going to have to be about 45 centimeters apart because this is a bit bigger cabbage so it will need a bit more space than some of the other cabbages. And that is my mammoth red rocks in. Now these will have a bit of a water, even though the ground is quite wet, it's not saturated. So I would rather water so all the soil goes back against those roots and there is no air pockets. And of course, it will be covered to protect them against these pesky birds. I think in the future though, when it comes to cabbages, I'm going to be growing much more open heart varieties. Things that I can just take the leaves and actually use that way instead of growing it for the heart. With the amount of slugs, with the way the weather has been a lot wetter over the previous few years, I do actually think that having cabbages that don't heart up where you find all those slugs and snails in the middle of your cabbages is a great way forward. I don't use pesticides, I don't use anything like that. So I try and use as much of a natural product as I possibly can, which means there's slugs and snails that do get through. And again, that is why I plant so many. Then at least if you have a loss of a few, it doesn't affect so much for your eating. And if you do end up growing the whole lot, well, there's ways of preserving and using all those fruits and vegetables. Now, whatever I'm planting out at the moment, be it the lettuces, the cabbages, the karobi and the pak choy, I'm gonna try and keep some spare. At this time of year, you will get pest damage. You could end up with having things that just aren't doing very well and they may struggle a little bit for whatever reason. So I always like to keep back a tray or maybe just even just a few, three or four, just to plug up any gaps that I have. And if they do fail even more than that, then something else will go in its place instead. Now, these karobi, these will be going in today as well. They've got to a half decent size. I really don't like leaving them any longer than this to give them any stress. And these will be planted out. But again, be warned, pigeons love this stuff. And in fact, I had quite determined pigeons last year and I lost pretty much most of my crop. I think I actually only got one or two of these to actually get a decent sized bulb on it. Another thing these may struggle with as well is flea beetle. Flea beetle is the bane of my life on this allotment. It really does cause us an awful lot of issues and I'm still yet to find a really good way to reduce the flea beetle numbers here. Now this is my karobi. But this bed is very, very weedy with bindweed. Last year, all the strawberries got in the way. So it's one of those beds I really am going to have to keep an eye on. not the most ideal bed to do this with but it's a bed that I can protect against pigeons. Now some of these are multi-sown and I'll be leaving them as such and they'll happily grow next to each other. Well they have done in the previous years. 
So after the cabbages are done and that kohlrabi is in the ground, what's next? Well, it's my red pak choy. Now this is very, very similar to the kohlrabi that I grew last year. The year before, I had no issues with my pak choy whatsoever and we grew some beautiful plants. Last year was a large disaster and because it got so hot so early on, they really did struggle to actually form any decent leaves. But the red ones, I'm gonna see how well these grow this year and I'm gonna pick it in a slightly shaded area somewhere where I can get them into the ground and where it gets sunshine, but it's not intense sunshine. They really don't like being in extreme heated conditions. So, I'm going to get these in. Now, some of the other lettuces that I've got growing, but I'm not going to pop back out yet, is some Catalonia lettuces, which are doing really well after being pricked out and some endive and again these will go out very soon i'm just not going to do it today i want to use the lettuces as fillers in between any gaps that i actually have so these will probably go out next week but i don't want them to go too far in these modules and start weakening off but the, that's the great thing about lettuces they will grow in modules really well up to a point and then you can pace yourself to actually plant them out. And that's what I love about these. As you can see back here, that once I've planted out the pak choy, the cabbages and the other bits and pieces that I've got in here, this will give me a lot more space for my next load of sowings. Because in the next couple of weeks, there's gonna be a load more sowings and even successional sowings of some of the things that I've already actually done. But at this time of year, there's lots of things that can go into the ground right now. Protection if needed, either be from pests or maybe a bit of excess wind. But excess wind from any wind damage, things like that, they can go in quite happily. Now, remember, everything that I've got growing in here is actually cold tolerant. There is no courgettes yet. There is no sweet corns. There is no melons. There is nothing that requires the temperatures to be above a certain condition. It's not worth it at the moment. And the only thing that we have brought down that does need that warmth is our tomatoes. But that's a different story. So that's it for today. I have got 101 things to do today. Now the weather is set to be drying up for at least the next week, maybe a shower or two, which with that I can cope with. But it means I can get on and carry on weeding and getting all the other jobs done here on our allotment. So I'll see you in the next video where I'll show you what we're doing with our tomatoes.